Yeah. It's all redeveloped now to say phone shop. Phone, and phone shop, yeah. And then, uh, <coughs> Market Lane, the entrance to Market Lane. No, the, the, the load of turf on the, on the roadway here at Bridge Street, is it, that, that, where, where that load of turf is there on the, the road will be in front of Sal Rio. Uh, yeah. And the archway at Sal Rio <coughs> led down to a bakery. Uh, down, down. Uh, I think it's called Brewery Lane. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And at, just, just to the right of, of that, well, where Johnny Moran's pub is now, there was a pub, a pub called Hopshaws, and they had a bakery down at the end of the lane, where, where John, Mc, where McKenna's barber shop is now located. Uh, I think some section of the uh, the old bakery is still there, but the, the ovens were fueled by turf. And uh, this uh, a man loading the turf and barrel it down the lane to, to the bakeries. Hold a minute. To the men in the leather. Somebody said that's Racker Queen. <laughs> Someone said that's Old, old Racker, yeah. Old Racker, yeah. Not Pecky, yeah. Uh, up, 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 on the, up on the leather. Yeah. On the leather, yeah. And the ace and carrot on underneath. This my Michael Friends Cafe. Peter Friends family <laughs> home on Bridge Street. He subsequently, that Michael friend, opened a, a lime burning kiln in, in the lime yard, uh, which is the car, upper car park now at James Street. And he was also involved in the first uh, cinema uh, or dance hall uh, where the ideal cinema was subsequently and uh, uh, it's now part of the car park. That's where Dr. Farrell stayed first when he came to town. Yeah, tell me that. Here, yeah, yeah. He got a present of a bed for his. Uh, he was getting married and he couldn't fit the bed into the room. See the name on the bottom? E.F. Kenny, Bridge Street, Westport. Okay. E.F. Kenny's was where the Porter House is now. Down below, just next door to Map Menards. This is a construction of the, of the bridge. In Newport, you can see all, all timber scaffolding. That's the West Westport. This is the viaduct at, at Westport, just off off uh, the uh, Tesco development. Now, this is the building of the Carnamarsa Estate, uh, where the old workhouse was, and it was. Paddy Kelly had the contract. He, at the time, he was based in Newsburg. But there's a, right. I don't know, is it in this now? There's a famous photograph of all the workers, including no. my own uncle uh, and Leo Tooley's <coughs> father was in it. When was it built? Yes, when the construction. They used the recycled the, re the, re the, the, the stonework huh? of the old workhouse oh, to yeah, build those houses. Huh? Peter Friend, but he's, he's uh, Jesus walked on Patty's first passport of Westport. It's like the day you walked in, Patty. You were there. That's right, yeah. It's a famous John Malone's weed rights. Uh, the, the property is virtually still the same. It's above the Bank of Ireland and at Lower High Street, famous uh, craftsman, oh, yes, yes. wheelwright. And, we and it's where, the, it's the where some of the sign is still there. It's where, uh, it's where all is, my mother's people were born. My mother was born there, all the yes. were born there. <coughs> this Harry is Hughes. the famous Harry, Harry Hughes, Hughes in his, in his blacksmith place down Church Lane. Yes, this is one of the, another blacksmith in town, one of the Lavelles, who had their, their blacksmith's operation on Mill Street beside where Tom Nathan's children home is now. Famous blacksmiths. Well, the way to go over to Fort. I am. 1814. Did you get a while ago in there at the hotel? There was a different one. Is it? I am 180. There's a name on that. Now, 
This is a famous photograph of the original workhouse in Westport Workhouse. And use this one, use this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Forgot me. And the, the, the workhouse complex where the Cotton and Mart Housing Estate now exists. Uh, the Cotton and Mart Housing Estate it was the largest uh, housing project undertaken by the Westport Travel District Council. Uh, and like some of the original, well, most of the original houses are there. Most of them have been modernised, of course, but there was a chapel, um, the main buildings with the drawing retreats for men and women, all separated, of course. And then there was a hospital here. Uh, I, I just shared this with you to, 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 to give an indication of how important this. My mother was born in the hospital, in, here, this building here, in the workhouse because her mother, my granny, Maggie Gillespie of Glen Heston, Newport, was banished from the house when she discovered that she was pregnant and unmarried. Uh, but of course, the big, one of the big things, there was a priest in the family and the scandal would be too much. So she was banished. She went, she was taken in by an aunt and in the area here. And her family heard that she was still in the area and they came up and the valley ragged her aunt to the degree where she was turned out and ended up in the workhouse and gave birth to my mother in, in this building here. Um, and Maggie herself was helped by relations of the O'Donnells, Michael O'Donnells and the man, and Liam Lyons, the our esteemed photographer. Uh, she, they helped her. Maggie Gillespie make uh, the journey out to Chicago and she, sadly she only lived four years after she arrived in Chicago. She died of TB. But just, just to put things in, in context, <coughs> but it's ironic, she was born here. She was fostered by a Kerrigan family at Letcherbrook, went to school in Letcherbrook. And as a teenager, she came into a house, this, uh, my, my, I have a cataract on my right eye, but this is going up from the octave up along P Street up to Tupperhead. And a family in Tupperhead, Gavins, and Mrs. Gavin, she died in ch after childbirth. And my mother had been fostered, as I said, out in, in Letcherbrook by the Kerrigan family, a wonderful family. One of them was Annie Kerrigan, who married Tim Hersey of TV Bohia had a big family, tragically lost three sons in, in, in tragic deaths. But my mother, uh, as a teenager, she, she had finished primary school, uh, she came in to help Jack Gavin rear the Gavin family. And she came in to, to, to live and work with Jack Gavin's up in overhead. And two doors up from that was my grandparents' home. And the, uh, my dad met my mother and the rest is the rest history. Is history. <laughs> but uh, she, was, she was born here, uh, lived, lived a few years up on top of her here, and subsequently after she married my dad, John Curry, she lived, we lived, this was our family home, on John's Road, number six up from the corner there. Okay. So the three place she was born, place she lived and worked on top of her and where she she lived and reared our family, are all in the one photograph there. Oh, yeah, nice, nice story. Where did the damn photographs come from? You can see the, the, the second of the building here now. It was a massive, that massive structure. Wow. This is the private fire, fire brigade that the Marcus Sligo had on his estate of Westport today. <coughs> It was one of the first private 
uh, fire brigades uh, in the whole region. In fact, it used to travel to help quell fires in, in all of the region. And subsequently, the Marks of the Sligo donated that engine and tender to Westport Urban District Council. And I've received that and have received that from the Marcus with the trained crew. The Marcus even uh, 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 funded the, the training of the crew and now it's his own crew. Colonel Kinney's dad was uh, one of the key men, the late Charlie Kinney of the Bach Eight. Sean Kittrick, the late Sean Kittrick from Westford Key, was a motorcycle uh, rider to, that led the brigade to different uh, events. And uh, as I said earlier, when they got that fire tender and engine, they, bi they built the new fire station at the Fairbury voluntarily. That's it. Hello. Yeah.